Hunter met huge inspiration. You know, the advice he gave me made me like $50,000 in one hour. A super fucking Yumi just doesn't go up, he doesn't quit. He's one of the most well known salespeople out there, sales trainers in the fucking country. Very impressive guy, give it up for my guy, Matt and Sarah Thor. He's Matt, baby! What is up, everyone? Welcome to the Closers Lab. I'm your host, Max Jimenez, and today is Thursday. We're so excited. Uh, for those of you that have never tuned in to the show, the Closers Lab, what do we do here on the Closers Lab is it's exactly what the title says, right? It's all about sales. It's all about negotiations. And then not only that, but we also get into the mindset and the psychology of sales. And we also make some calls, talk to sellers. That's the, our main goal, right? Not just to talk about sales, not just to uh, you know, uh, talk theory, not just to promote content, but we want to add some substance to that content. And so that way, um, you know, the content is actually uh, real. So one of the things I want to, uh, start with is it, this is a live show. I always say this, I highly, highly encourage every single one of you to ask questions, uh, leave comments. One thing that I ask is that you hit, you, you hit the like button, subscribe. If you have not subscribed to the channel, and then share this with one person that you think that you know would benefit from this call to get better uh, at negotiations, to get better at sales. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And so I highly, highly uh, encourage you to do that. Um, and uh, thank you for joining me. I know there's a few on here. And again, this is a live show. Don't forget. Uh, so bring your questions, uh, ask your questions and uh, your comments as well, too. One thing that I want to see, uh, one thing I want to see, make sure you guys are. Make sure you can hear me clearly. Leave some thumbs up. Drop some fire emojis. And then also, what market are you guys watching from? What markets are you guys watching from? So, um, and uh, got some questions already coming in. Let's go. What market are you in? Let's see. Um, so, we got some people on here. Um, let's see who's on here right now. So, we got Ricardo Rosales. He said, they sell shaving kits in La Tienda. <laughs> You don't like my beer, bro? It's it's just started to grow by itself. <laughs> uh, Andrew said, uh, first time, and I've been watching the clock for this to start. Let's go, Andrew. I appreciate it. Ken, as always, thank you for your support, man. You're you're awesome. You're great. Uh, what's up, Max? When you speak with a seller who has to speak with a spouse, uh, you say, what's his number? Let me call him now. Uh, yeah, let me... Um, let me, I'll get into that right now. I want, I want some more people to jump in. That is a good, that's a great question, by the way. It happens to a lot of us. So, uh, Andrew said, New Jersey, Jersey in the house. Ricardo said, ha ha, I'm looking the same way right now. <laughs> yeah, bro. I don't know. I mean, the way it's growing out, potentially, maybe we'll get rid of it. Uh, you know, maybe we'll shave it off, but, uh, we'll see, we'll see what happens. We'll see. Um, thank you guys all for jumping in. Where, where are you, where are you, where are you tuning in from? I know we got Jersey in the house. We got Houston in the house. Ricardo Ken's also in Houston. Uh, Xavier has a question. How do you get over a seller who won't disclose their asking price? Uh, man, I've done that so many times on the live. You have not watched the previous lives. Um, you got to go back and watch it. I'll, I'll cover that as well, too. So I'll make sure I'll start that question. Uh, just to make sure that uh, we can uh, get back to it, because uh, that is a great question, by the way. Uh, Colin, what's up, man? Max, let's get it. I've learned so much from your process and have started implementing some of your techniques. I'm not the best at sales. I'm further down the road, thanks to you. Man, I appreciate that. Um, you know what, Colin? Here's the thing, man, is... This for some reason, and and it, it, it's 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 social media's fault. Social media is at fault for this. We've created this facade or this avatar that the salesperson has to be like this guy that's a shark and a killer and and a maverick, right? Like a personality, and it's not, brother. It's not what it what sales is about is having a system. I just finished a master class. There were seventeen people in that master class. They're all great business owners. They're all great. Uh, 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 individuals that are looking to get better. And basically, man, um, honestly, looking at their personality profiles and watching them, you know, they, they, you would see, you would look at them and you wouldn't say like, man, this guy would be a killer on the, on the phones based on the reactions they do and things like that. But they, if you follow a, a process, 
you're going to get better, man. And this process that I talk about on, on, on the closers lab, I've had so many people DM me that they get deals just based off just like you, right? You're getting better. So build your process, build, build a system, sorry, a sales system. I don't like the word sales process, build a sales system because you're going to, that's, what's going to help you to get better. It's not, you know what I mean? It's, it's not the, you know, you got to be like, will grit, blah, blah, blah. Like that stuff, that stuff is not sustainable, man. It's uh it's, uh, you know, and I'll challenge anyone on that. Like that's why the revolving door for a sell, the revolving door for, for a sales business is it's happened so much because they don't have a sales system that they can plug someone in. Uh, whereas the personality, they can continually do the same thing and just follow that system and they have high, high success. Um, but keep pushing it, bro. Keep pushing. It. I highly encourage you start building your system. And then that way uh, you can definitely, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, get better, bro. But man, that's awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. Let's see. Uh, Andrew said, I watched an interview of you role playing. You mean, you mean it when you say that you live this because I was just watching you and you were a sniper, bro. I appreciate it, man. I, I don't, again, this is not, I appreciate it, man. Thank you for that. For that comment it means a lot. It, it talks more to the community that actually supports me than myself, because these are the type of comments that I love hearing from individuals like yourself. Not only, you know, because it's valid, right? Here's the thing, man. I want to say this because it's been on my mind a little bit. I'm seeing so much content, but without any substance, right? And when you have content, whether it's material, whatever that content is, and it has no substance, it's all fluff, right? Now, if you have content with substance, then it's fulfillment, right? It's real. And that's the thing. And I, and I, and I talked about this uh, last week. I think I went on a little rant last week about this, um, you know, and, and it's easy to get on a microphone. It's easy to get on, 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 a, on IG and talk about this and talk about that. But, it, but that's the thing that like irks me in a way because it, mis it misleads people, right? And so um, having content and having material it's it's fine, right? Like we could have the same material, we can have the similar material, but if you don't have a substance to that to that material, well, it's all fluff, right? There's got to be even if we're talking about the same exact thing, right? That's the difference, and that's what I want to bring to this. And I appreciate you for that comment, Leo, my bro. What's going on, man? I appreciate you. God bless you too, man. I thank you for your support, man, Leo. You've always been a you know, since we linked up back in 2019, brother, you always been a supporter. You've always been somebody that, uh, you know, that that is on the show consistently. So, Jared, what's up, man? What's going on? Colin says I'm in Georgia. Let's go. Georgia in the house. Um, if for some reason you Facebook users, you got to put your name in there. Uh, Mar, what's going on? I appreciate you. I'm doing well, man. I hope you're doing well as well, too. Um, that's uh, this comment here. Ryan said, let's go. Yes, Ryan Overcast. That's my that's my boy right there. Let's go. Aaron Avila is in the house. I appreciate you. Andrew said, can you explain more on how to build the system? Yes, I can definitely do that. I'm going to start your comment as well. I got three comments that are really, really good right off the back. Dave said, Dave is saying, what's up, man? How you doing, man? Uh, Davis said, was actually an, um, uh, um, a person that has not only been on the uh, on the uh, on the lives he came, he also attended the master class. And um, man, that guy, he's uh he's he's gonna be a killer, man. He's uh he's doing his work, he's he's building a system, and he's basically uh he actually got his first deal before even coming to the just based on the things that were here. That's so amazing. He um he 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 got his first deal just from what he heard here, right? Off the calls and all that, and so um so man, glad you're on here, David. Uh, Paul says, yo, Matt, yo, Matt, you, Max, my dude, keep dropping them gems, Phoenix, Arizona. Of course, Paul, you already, you already know what's up, man. Never change, never change. Right. Um, let's see who else we got here. Jose, what's up, Jose? How you doing? Uh, Mar says, what's up, Max? Hope you're doing well. You're the real deal. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for the, thank you for those comments. That means a lot, man. That means a lot. Amador, what's up, bro? Let's go. Let's crush it today, man. Sebastian in the house. Let's go. Another two two killers that were part of the master class. These guys are going to crush it. They, they already did actually when we were in the master class, like they were getting deals. Uh, you know, there was a couple of deals that, that went back and got, you know, on, on some of the techniques that we talked about, uh, Amador, uh, you know, they, they went, they, they went to an appointment and they weren't able to, you know, they had some 
objections come up. And then we talked about it on the master class two weeks ago. And then the next day they got the deal locked up based on certain things that we talked about. Uh, Sebastian, same thing. Uh, actually, Sebastian, I give I gotta give Sebastian big props because he is in Canada where you can't pull list. There's no distress list. There's no there's no investor lift. There's none of that. And the guy's doing deals and he's crushing it up there. Congratulations, bro. Angel says uh, fire emojis. I appreciate it. Um, Leo, uh, are you cool with San Antonio Salas? Uh, don't have no idea. You guys hash that out. Uh, facts. No lie. Thank you, Davidson. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate it. So uh, Witchley, what's up, bro? Says, yo, yo, I've been MIA for a while, but I'm planning to work on that, bro. It's um everybody's journey is different. This is the, <laughs> and guys, and I have to apologize when I go on little rants here because my, my thing is that I don't like people being taken advantage of, and I don't like people that that have no substance to their content. If you guys have known me for a while, I don't deviate and I don't change, right? And so and so and I'm gonna call it out, right? When when there's something like this basically comes up. Most people would say like, oh, man, what's taking you so long? You know, you should already be having success. Everybody has their own journey, brother. So don't, you know, don't worry about it. You know, you know I appreciate you for the support. We all have our own, our own journey, right? We all we all take we all have different steps. We have different backgrounds. We all have different support. You know, this is why you can. This is why I always tell people admire someone that's at a stage where you want to be at. But also don't get caught up in the fact that you're not there yet because you have no idea what uh, what was their backing, financial backing, what was their support, what was this, what was it that slingshot their career? Because they won't tell you, right? They won't tell you. They just show you the end result. And and but man, do your do your thing, bro. You run your run your race, you know, run it at your pace. And that's the best way that you're gonna be successful, right? Don't let nothing rush you. But thank you, man, for being on here, by the way. Uh, Jose says, Max, are you still accepting members to the Facebook group? I send you an IG message. Yes, guys, for all of you that are waiting for my reply to join the Facebook group, guys, I really want to apologize because, listen, right now I'm just on my own. So what I'm doing is uh, not not my own. Sorry, not 100 percent my own. But most of the stuff like I do with with this stuff, it's, it's myself. Um, and obviously I had the master class going on. I had the call, support calls. So the, in the master class, there were support calls. And so I had those, you know, scheduled. And then the other thing too, obviously trying to, you know, not trying, but running my business, right. Getting deals and stuff. Um, that's the other thing too. So, um, but, but again, um, I, got, uh, I don't have anything as far as scheduled until next month. Any besides running my business and working on getting deals is that, um, I'm going to respond. What I want to say, long story short, I want to say I'm going to respond to every single person that uh, that basically has asked for access to the private Facebook group. Um, so if you want if if you're if you sent the message a while back, resend it again today, please. All of you guys, all you guys that sent me a message to get on the private Facebook group. And it's been a while since you send the message, um, you know, basically uh, uh, resend it, please. So it can be on top of my on top of the list, because, guys. I get so many messages and there's even some that I don't even look at just because it's all trash and it's all advertising and, you know, Hey, let me get you to 50,000 followers. Absolutely not. Um, you know, it, it reminds me of, um, on that movie, uh, what is it called? The uh, tombstone when, uh, when dog, Hot, when I, sorry, Billy, the kid on young guns says, I'll make you famous. Whenever I see those guys that, that, that say, let me get you to 10,000 followers or basically, uh, and the reason why it reminds me because, when Billy the Kid used to say, I'll make you famous, he didn't mean like I'm going to make you popular. He said he would make you famous by killing you. And so when these guys that reach out to me that want to increase my followers to 10,000, 20,000, well, guess what? Yeah, I'm going to uh, uh, I'm going to get more followers, but it's going to kill my Instagram. Right. Right now, I get so much uh, so much activity on my Instagram. But anyways, um, that's another rant for another day. But please, please, for those of you guys that reached out about the private Facebook group. Message me again so I can uh, definitely give you the what do you call it? Uh, Jesus, the access. Jesus Pettis says, Fort Worth, Texas in the house. Let's go. I love it. I love it. Um, I love the uh, the Texas, man. You guys are, man, Houston, San Antonio, uh, Fort Worth now, Dallas. Uh, who's in here from Dallas? Let's see. Texas is in the house, man. I love the support from Texas. Thank you, guys. Sergio, how can I increase my lead list? Currently getting 800, but trying to bump it up to five to 10,000 lists. I'm going to star that because I think that's a question that we need to dive in. 
Ryan Overcash says, you got me, bro. Chacho, never alone. I appreciate it, bro. Thank you for the support. Uh, you know, you're like my brother and you know that already. So I don't have to go too deep into that. So uh, Aaron Avila said, Life occurs. We all have our own path and we just have to master the cards that are dealt with every day. Um, and the other thing is, yo, uh, stay in your lane. Always humble CEO. Yeah. A hundred percent, man. That's it. That's it. And it's a good way to break it down, but yeah, stay in your lane for sure. How do you prevent seller buyer's remorse or whatever is called? Um, well, I mean, we, that's probably a whole show on its own. Um, there is a there is a couple of things that you. So what I do is on the master class, I actually break this down step by step. And I actually, yes, a lot of people got to see this. I played a I played a call from when I did it. So it's not again, it, it's the materials there, the contents there. But I also I also played a call from a seller how I did it on a, on a, on a less than 10 minute call for you guys that were on that call. What did you guys think of that? Uh, Sebastian or Amador, uh, Mateo, I don't know if you're on here. Um, uh, Davidson's on here. What did you guys think about the, the, the next steps process, right? What, uh, Jared is talking about. I'm not going to go through the whole breakdown because that's part of the masterclass, Jared. But what I will tell you, I'm going to give you three tips, what you need to do. First of all, when you get the, the agreement sign, okay. When you get the agreement sign, whether it's on the phone or whether it's in person, do not, do not, do not leave, open up escrow, and forget about the sellers. That's the last thing that you want to do. If you don't have a team like a TC or somebody, it's your responsibility to, to make sure that you – I've talked to so many people, and it's incredible, and it's mind-blowing – how many people get the contract and then they don't even communicate with the seller anymore. And then you get pissed because, or you, or they get upset because the seller's trying to back out. That's not their fault. That's, that's our fault for not communicating with the sellers. I see this happen all the time. Now guys who have team, team members or guys who are crushing it, like they have a setup now, basically like they're doing that. So that's the first tip that I'm going to recommend to you, Jared. Don't just get the contract, leave, open up escrow. The second thing is that ta ask, you know, talk to the seller, you know, ask him a simple question. Hey, now that we have this sign, now that this is signed, what does this mean to you? Right. You got to reinforce what they just did. You can't just have them sign the agreement, whether it's on the phone. I don't care if it's over the phone. Don't you know, if, if even if you sent the agreement because they had to review it and they sign it. As soon as you get that DocuSign that says document completed, you should be picking up that phone and, and calling them and saying, hey, you know, I uh, wanted to call you because I noticed I received the, the agreement through email. I really appreciate that. Thank you for getting it all signed. Um, the next steps that I want to talk about is before I go open up escrow, before I go do everything, you know, I just wanted to ask a few questions before I do that and use all my resources, get my team involved. Now, you may not have a team yourself in office, but guess what? Your title company is a team. Most people forget about that. Most people forget that their title company is their team. Leverage that, leverage that to, to the max, right? Leverage that to the max. So then, then you're going to say, look, just one, just before I do that, I did have to, I wanted to ask you a couple questions and then you can start conversating on what this agreement means to them. And one thing that'll help you is remind them of everything that they talked about. Right. So that way um, you're, you're, that's, that's the second tip. And then the third tip is, is, Hey, you know, if somebody was, and I'm going to give you this one thing, there's a lot more that I cover in the master class, but I'm giving you three tips, right? Guys, you got to write this down. The, the third tip that I want to give you is, you know, um, there's still going to be a lot of people calling you. What happens is when they call you and they talk to you about buying your house? What is that going to look like? So what I say is tackle what you cannot avoid in the future. Tackle now what you cannot avoid in the future. Now, that's going to help to improve your odds of people not ghosting you and not uh, and, and maybe wanting to cancel you because they wanted to go with someone else. That's how you solidify. That's how you uh, uh, enforce or, or sorry, yeah, or reinforce, reinforce the agreement that you just signed with them. You got to remember that, man. I see this happen so many times where people, <laughs> they get the contract. And then I asked one guy a couple of weeks ago and I shared this with the class on uh, uh, yesterday. It was like. Yeah, tell me about the deal. Blah, blah, blah. When's the last thing you talk to seller? I don't know. I got the contract signed. It came in the email, and then I went to open an escrow. I haven't communicated with the seller. 
And I'm like, what? <laughs> and so, and, and, and the thing is that, um, we rely to, we, we can't do that, man. Because then what happens is as the deal starts to go South, then we try to, then we get mad at the seller because they either got, they, maybe they call somebody else calling. We don't know. Right. So those three things, if you could do those three things that I just gave you, there's obviously a lot more that goes into it. Um, but, uh, you know that I have to save that most of that information, but I just gave you a lot. Ask any of the guys that were in the class. I actually gave you a lot. I'm on the says we're definitely we're definitely implementing what Max showed us to prevent seller most. It's a game changer. So you see, it's uh, it's um, especially right now, man, in this in this market, which it has been for the most part. Um, but what I just gave you, that should be enough to actually go and implement and have success with. So, um. Any other questions on that? Because I'm gonna, I want to answer these four questions before I actually, uh, these four questions that people, uh, that some of the guys are asking. Um, let's see. Oh, by the way, one more thing is, uh, before I forget, I want to make this announcement: is Tuesday's calls, guys, are on pause right now for a couple of weeks. Uh, so just FYI, that's why there was no call this Tuesday. Um, they're going to be on pause. Thursday's definitely a go every Thursday, uh, but the calls for um, but the calls for uh, for Thursdays, they're, they're going to continue. So, all right, let's see. Let's go back to the questions. How do you get over a seller who won't disclose their asking price? Ask them, say, hey, just it, it just depends on the con here's the thing is, is this is what you have to be conscious of the conversation. The guys that were in the master class understand this. And I'm going to give you a few tips about this. A lot of times. You might be you, you you're probably come going into price too fast. I don't know the whole scenario here, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and just make assumptions here, right? I'm gonna make a couple assumptions. Maybe you're you're maybe you're jumping into price way too fast, and the guys in the master class can actually speak about this. They can comment on this. Maybe you're you're jumping into price right off the back, and so you have not even discovered whether this is an individual that you're gonna do business with, and then now it's a price conversation. Right. Maybe. Again, I'm just making I'm just making assumptions here because I don't know the whole story. I don't know where 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 this is happening to you. Uh, the other thing, too, is that is it just depends on on which way you're you're which way you're guiding the calls. Right. Because I can teach you. I can talk to you about certain strategies and tactics of what you say. But if it's not in the right position and it's not in the right framework, they're not going to work. I don't care what anybody says. Right. So it just depends. Right. I don't have a lot of info on the situation, but I know that if that if that if I that if I was at a, a on a sales call or I was at an appointment physically in the house and I'm negotiating with the seller and I'm talking to them and, you know, we build rapport. I set up an advance agreement, you know, getting permission to ask questions. And then I ask them motivational uh, questions, pain questions to figure out if this is somebody that I'm even going to do business with. And then we get to the price. Now, that's different. Right. I got enough data now to be able to use to be able to get them to tell me their price. Right. If you just answer the phone and you start to build a report and then the next thing that comes out is the price and price negotiation. And you're tr you're trying to get a price from the seller. It's just a, it's too much of a logical conversation. And then the seller is is in the stage of what I call the, the critical parent. They're not going you're you'll never close a cr critical parent. I don't care how how good you are. So just be conscious of that, man. I, and again, you know, uh, um, uh, it, it's just I'm very passionate about this because most people when when I get this question asked, I always ask, OK, so when is this happening? Is this did you get enough? Did you get enough motivation? Did you get enough pain to even discuss price? Is this an engaged prospect or is this somebody that's just coming out of the woodwork with guns blazing? What's your price? And, and, and you know what I'm saying? It's uh, it's, there's no magic words, man, that you can, that you can do that. There's, there's, there's things that you can ask when they're positioned correctly at the right time. Right. Um, you know, the old saying is, is not what you say is how you say it. That's totally false. Honestly, it's not what you say or how you say it is totally false. It's not what you say is when you say it. That makes sense. Because the thing is that um, in a negotiations, if you don't have enough uh, intel or pain to maybe um, to, to be able to have these conversations, maybe that's what's happening. But, you know, one thing that's very popular uh, that was very popular or that is, excuse me, very popular in the master class is the uh, basically the hey, you know, just just out of curiosity, 
off the record ballpark, what were you looking to get for this? Now, tonality matters as well, too. You have to have the right tonality. You guys just you guys heard how I said this, right? You need to make sure. But again, if you're asking this in the beginning of negotiations, it's not going to work. It's not going to work at all. There's other factors that go into it. So, um, you know, and and there's a couple other things you can do. Like, you, for example, you can say, hey, you know, when when you bought this property, what did that process look like? And then, you know, they're obviously going to say, well, did you have a, you know, well, I had a realtor or I looked at it, uh, you know, OK, per, OK. And, and so you didn't just make the offer then. So what's uh, so when you bought the property, so it sounds like you went out and looked at it. There was a price on it. Do you mind if I get that same courtesy? Right. And then if they say, yeah, no, I get it. OK, perfect. So what were you hoping to get for it? Right. You're going to move into that. Um, there's just different ways, but also it just depends on where where you're actually uh, where you're where you're saying this. So um, let's see. Second question is a uh, can says, what's up, Max? When you speak with the seller who has to speak with the spouse, you say, what is his number? Let's call him now. Um, not very not not in that way. <laughs> Um, it, it, it's the right, it's the right mindset, right? I know where you're going with it. Um, just make sure that you're not, uh, soften it up a little bit. Don't come out of the, don't come out like, you know, uh, with the, with basically swinging, you know what I'm saying? Um, so basically what you need to do is if I'm at an appointment or if I'm on a sales call and, and, you know, I'm talking to one spouse from talking to the, um, uh, a spouse, then I would say, uh, you know, I noticed I noticed that um, two people were on the on the deed. If you know that information, it's always good to know that. And I'm only talking to one. Um, who else is that second person that's supposed to be on this call? Now we're going to be like, OK, um, do you think that if because here's the problem in order for me to buy that this property today, I'm actually going to need both signatures, not just one. That makes sense. So out of curiosity, let's call them so we can, you know, be all be on the same phone. We can do a, a, a what, what I've done before in the past is I've actually done a, uh, a basically a conference call and I can do that for you. What what is the number that we can call him on? Now, that's a little bit different than what's his number. Let's call him now. Right. That's a that's that's a, that's his number. Sorry, that's that's a lot better than what's his number. Let's call him now. Same message. Just a little bit position. Right. Positioning. Because remember, positioning. Is really is is really key in the negotiation. So, so and then if they say, hey, you know, because uh, uh, they're obviously sometimes they're going to be at work. Okay, perfect. So, so then what I what I know in the past, what I've done when this happens is I've actually uh, scheduled a call to have both of you on the call to make sure I answer both both of your questions, make sure I address both of your concerns. Because here's the thing: is that in, when I've only talked to one party. And the other party's not there. What happens is that um, the questions don't get answered, and a lot of times they don't want to call me back because of two things: they're either they're either uh, they're either uh, afraid to ask the question or even embarrassed. And I don't want that to happen here. So, what if you were me? What time would you call back to have us all three on the on the line? So that's that's the back end of it. That's the back end of when you're there and they can't call them. Uh, but position it, man. Soften it up. Don't come out of the gates too hard, right? However you want to position it, just, hey, you know, just uh, I noticed that there's I noticed you spoke about your spouse. I noticed that there's two people on title. Uh, you know, um, who is that other who is the other person that's on title or, hey, I, I noticed that your spouse is not here with us today. Do you do these kind of things without them and without having their presence here? Um, OK, because in my experience, I've never bought a house with having both parties involved if both parties are going to be a uh, part of the sale. Right. And so then and then and then the next thing would come, you know, just out of curiosity, is there a number we can call them on or is there, you know, just like you said. Right. But now we're softening it up. Right. We're getting into a couple of different things on that. So uh, Andrew said, can you explain more on how to build a system? Um, yeah, I mean, that's dude, that's a three week class. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, if you uh, so I'll give you I'll give you the the breakdown on on. Um, the way I run my system, right? Which is uh, basically it's going to be bonding and report, right? And bonding and report doesn't mean that it stops in the beginning. It just, that's the first thing you got to start doing. The second thing is you got to set up an advance agreement. Advance agreement means that um, you're, you're basically 
letting them know how these calls go, how much time you got. Uh, basically, you're letting them know as well what's going to happen in these meetings, and you need to ask questions. And then this, the the next thing is is pain or sorry, um, uh, motivation, right? Uh, finding out motivation. And I'm not talking about. And and so when I say motivation, I mean like, is there any pain? Is there any gain? that you're going to discover that's going to help you to negotiate and get that property at a deeper discount guys pain, the pain funnel. I mean, to build the pain questioning, that's the difference between $10,000 and a hundred thousand dollars spread. You guys, you, you got to understand that. Like, you know, most people, they don't like to ask those deep questions because they're either too nervous or too, too worried. And so what happens is that they end up blocking the deal where they only do $5,000 or $3,000 or $2,000. And then you guys, and then what happens, you lock it up, you can't sell it. Now you got to go back and man, I just saw a video today talking about, you know, uh, how to go back and renegotiate if you locked it up too high. Like I was like, why not get better at negotiating? Why just lock it up and then go back, you know, do the things that you need to do to get that price reduction. That's terrible. I think that's not good business. That's not good business at all. And so, so then, so then again, bonding report, advance agreement, you got the pain, the, the, the motivational section. And then the next thing is price. And then once you get price, you're going to discover timeline and uh, who else is involved. And then you're going to close the deal. So, um, so that's my system. If you go back, Andrew, cause I think, uh, Andrew, did you say it's the first time? Yeah. So you, this is your first time on the call. Go back to my calls. And you're gonna see that I actually don't deviate from the uh, from 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 the actual uh, system at all ever. There might be some times when I when I go with the flow and go with the seller because it, because it's needed. But um, but uh, but I mean it, it's a real your question is a very very uh, in depth question just to give you like a quick answer. But I just broke down what my system looks like and how I run it. Uh, how can I increase my lead list? Currently getting 800, but trying to bump it up to five. So are we talking about a marketing list? Because there's, so there's lists, leads, and prospects. If you're getting 800 leads, that's a lot. <laughs> I don't know how you're handling all that. Uh, I'm assuming that you're talking a list, right? A list, 800, uh, a list of 800 people or a list of, you know, five to 10,000 people. Um, there's a lot of different list providers. Uh, you know, I think, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you're, Driving for a dollar, Sergio. I'm not sure what it is exactly. If you can elaborate just a little bit more on the question, I can definitely help you out. So um, let's see. Let's see here. Can you pull more? Can you pull real motivation in the beginning of the conversation? Or is there a way to have them walk right into it? So no, there's no there's no having the prospect walk into anything. You actually have to derive this the call, right? Uh, there is a rule in the book right here that you guys see back here, this book back here, uh, the 49 Sandler rules. And one of the rules there says, don't get mad at the prospect for not doing what you didn't tell them to do. Remember that. Don't get mad at the prospect for not doing what you didn't tell them to do. So what I'm that goes with your question here. It's um, it's, it's it's definitely um, a, what is it? Is it? To, to have them walk, walk right into it, it's, it's definitely not something that you want to do. You want to you want to drive the conversation. Yes, you want to control the whole situation because you're the expert. But you also want to make sure that they feel that they feel comfortable, that they get to trust you and that they and that they feel like they're being heard. And the only way you're going to get to be able to have the motivation conversation is if you set up an advance agreement by saying, hey, may I share something with you before we continue these calls in the past? I've never bought a house without asking, without asking questions. That's just the plain reality. So in order for me, Andrew, to buy your property, what I need to do today is ask you maybe a few couple questions just to determine if this is a house I'm even going to buy. I don't even know if I'm going to buy this property. But the ones I bought before, the way I bought them was to be able to ask you a few questions. Is that fair? So that's how now when I get to my to the to the motivation section where I'm going to discover pain or gain. Now I'm going to now now I have permission to ask those questions. Now I have permission to, you know, uh, uh, dig as deep as I want to. And if they and if for some reason they start to like, hey, why are you asking all these questions or whatever? Now I'm going to say, I'm sorry, Andrew, I'm really confused earlier when we started the conversation. You had said that it was OK for me to ask these questions. Now it sounds like it's a problem. What change? Now I'm not defending. 
they got to defend their statement. So, um, but yeah, be careful with that. Try not to, um, try not to like, there's no like, I got you right there. There's no that. So, uh, how many calls does one of your co callers make per day? And how many did you get? Did I get what? Um, I think you left out the last part. Um, so our co callers, we, we, they have to do a minimum of, you know, anywhere between anywhere. I like for them to be around a thousand dials, right? A thousand calls. That's dials. That's not contact conversations. Because then what my goal is, I don't even really focus on that anymore. I'm focusing more on leads. I want to get two to three thousand, two to, sorry, two to three leads per day from each co caller. Two to three leads per day for each co caller. However, they do that, that's not, Honestly, because every cold caller is really different and to be able to gauge, there's going to be some better than others. There's going to be, but if they can do anywhere between 800 to a thousand dials, um, and, and they generate leads, I'm happy with that. But honestly, my, um, at this stage, honestly, I'm focused more on the high level KPIs. So if I have a cold caller that I hire and they can't even give me two to two to three leads per day, then I'm getting rid of them. I don't care if they make 10,000 dials. I don't care if they make 15,000 dials. I don't care if they have 100 contacts, right? If you can't generate two to three, th two to three leads a day for me based on the script that I give you, then I'm moving on. Uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't get caught up on that no more. Same thing with an acquisition person. I don't care about your dials. I don't care about your contacts. I care about your conversations, how many, how many um, sales appointments you had, how many you completed, and how many contracts we got. Those four things, right? That's all I care about. Um, so, but there is, there, you know, it, it, like I said, I'm happy with if they can be around 800 to, to 1,000 per cold caller per day. I ask, I ask a lot of questions, man. I also ask dumb ones because someone's probably thinking it. No, 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 no. It's, it's bro, uh, if I come across like, like I'm very passionate about this, so it gets me pumped up, right? Uh, no, don't take it in offense. I'm very pumped up, and I actually, uh, I've had some people apologize to me, but don't worry about that. You know, uh, I learned a long time ago uh, from from um, from uh, somebody that I knew was very much older than me, and he told me this: there are no dumb or stupid questions, only dumb and stupid people. Because you know why? Because they didn't ask the question. Think about that. There is no dumb or stupid questions, only dumb or stupid people because they didn't ask the question. So, no, man, keep asking the questions. I love it. Uh, Jay, what's up, Juan? Just out of curiosity, which means off the record, by far some of the best lines to use uh, to have sellers expand their words. Absolutely. Man, you guys are just coming with these questions. Um, whenever I first started, somebody told me to lock up my 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 deal and if it's too high renegotiate i didn't like that approach glad you feel the same way I absolutely hate it <laughs> you know why and here's why here's why Ken. because the problem is it doesn't really teach you anything right what it teaches you is to be this a uh, uh, very very snaky I, I in my opinion anyways it doesn't teach you anything in regards to how to actually uh, it, that's not sales and negotiations at all that's that's basically uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, that that's that's a grimy way to get contracts, and then a grimy way to get a price drop. Honestly, it's it's for me. I, I like to sleep at night comfortable. I you know I can't. Yeah, I just constantly could not do that, man. It's it doesn't teach people anything. It doesn't help them. As a matter of fact, it actually hurts our industry when people do that. Um, and the reason why it hurts our industry because it only takes a couple people to complain, right? That this is happening. And then litigation starts to happen or sorry, leg leg legislation starts to happen. Then you got people that you don't want to involve in our industry, right? Like government. And so, again, it, it's a it's a it's a, uh, it's a continuous it's a continuous uh, chain reaction that never stops until we're all out of business. Right. Or until we can't wholesale no more. And it starts with something like that. Right. Like just lock it up. No intention of ever negotiating, no intention of learning anything, no intention of solving problems. Let's lock it up. We'll wait a week. We'll wait, a, you know, a three days before closing or the day of closing. We'll call them and we'll say, hey, my finance department or whoever the heck they want to call it. Right. My my whatever department said that these numbers don't work. We need to be at. And then they price drop them by 20, 30, 30 thousand dollars less. That's terrible. People already packed up. U-Haul, all that. Like that's 
yeah, man. Um, anyways, I don't want to go on a rant on that, but yeah, definitely it's not something um it's not something I don't like. I actually hate it. I don't I don't understand why people do that. Uh have you ever locked up a deal that you felt was a tad bit too high? Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm not saying that I haven't, but I don't intentionally do it, right? Like the like the example that uh, Ken gave here. I don't intentionally uh uh basically uh what do you call it, do it. We all, for some reason, thought we had a good deal, right? It's happened to all of us. We thought we had a good deal. And the thing is that, you know, we find out there's probably extra work or whatever, right? And, yeah, we then we find out we might have locked it up too high. That's that's a lot different than, hey, just lock it up. Who cares what price they want? We'll price drop them at, at the closing date. Very unethical. And 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 that's, yeah, of course, we locked up deals and, and you know, but we, we found out later on after we discovered maybe, you know, looking at the property or something came up where, hey, this is going to be a little too high, man. And, you know, we'll talk to the seller. We'll say, look, here's what we discovered. Here's what happened. But that wasn't intentional, right? It wasn't like that was what we wanted to do. So uh, Sergio said, currently just doing driving for dollars, our list. Okay. Um, yeah, that's kind of hard, man, because 800 is a lot. Because if you're driving for dollars and you're getting, uh, you know, I, I'm going to go back to your question. You're getting 800. That's a lot, man, for driving for dollars. I don't know how you would be able to bump that up unless you get other people involved. You know, like Uber drivers, maybe you can pay, you know, per per lead or pay them when the deal closes. Get some Uber drivers to uh, start going into the Uber driver, uh, Uber uh, Facebook pages and uh, and basically uh, <laughs> uh, what is it called? Um, have them drive for you. Get you leads. You know, I don't know if you, you know, hey, if you hit 100, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll pay you 30 bucks or whatever. Right. Because they're already driving anyways. So why not have them submit leads? I just don't know how you're going to be able to scale that, bro, by yourself. You got to get other people involved. I oh, the other thing, too, is maybe I've never done it. I don't know how it works, but you could do virtual driving for dollars. I don't know if there's some people, uh, some of you guys that are listening, if you've done if that if that I've never done it, if that's even a, legi a legitimate thing. Uh, virtual driving for dollars um, because we know Google changes uh, rapidly and they change often. So I don't know how updated those pictures are, but I've heard people do that uh, virtual uh, driving for dollars. So um, Andrea says, how do you figure out your MAO? Uh, well, you typically there's a lot of different ways. Everybody does it differently. There's no one way, right? For me, what I like to look at is I usually want to be I usually want to end up I start when I start looking at a deal. My initial reaction is start the start the uh, the analysis at 70 percent of ARV always. That doesn't mean that it's a hard number. I'm just saying that's where I go to right away. I start analyzing the deal around 70, 70 percent ARV always. That's my default go to. It doesn't mean I stay there and then I figure out once I start to discover OK, this is a new house. It's a newer neighborhood. It's a better condition, blah, 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 all those things. Then I adjust based on what the neighborhood is doing, based on the on the condition of the house. Or I may even reduce it. Right. I don't know. Uh, it just depends. But but then you got to figure out, you know, do an, do an estimation of how much your repair costs are going to be. And then your assignment fee also has to be. Now, be careful, though, with repair costs like. I know here in Phoenix, in our market, where everything's cookie cutter. I know a, a, a one section of Phoenix, if you put more than $20,000, you overspend. I know another section of Phoenix, if I put less than $20,000, then it's not going to sell. So I, so that's another thing about knowing your market. Um, you know, So that's how I'm able to calculate repairs. But you got to figure out a number, a center number that works for you where you can quickly look at a deal. I'm going to start here. Let's 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 look at the area. Let's look at the year. Let's look at condition. Let's see what's happening. And then you you adjust. Do not stay hardcore with 70 percent minus repairs minus your fee. Do not do that. That's just where I start. That's just where I start to look at a deal. And then I come up with my max about max allowable offer. Uh, do you still get code violations in your market? What do you think about that list? I love it. I, I think it still works. I mean, code by code enforcement. The thing is that if you can go get them uh, every month, like in Phoenix, that comes out every month, uh, new ones. Um, they're great. You can get deals out of that. It's just you have to um, they give it to you in like in a PDF here. You get it emailed and then basically you have to uh, submit it to a PDF converter and stuff. So it's a little bit of work, but it's um, it's basically uh, what is it called? Um, uh, worth it. That's what I want to say. 
What's up, Thomas? He says it's unethical, and I've seen this happen. Yep, and I'm pretty sure you're talking about the price drop for sure. Um, I mean, that's what I'm assuming. Definitely, I agree with you 100%. Uh, I'm doing, am I doing okay? I drive for dollars two hours every day and then text them. I'm starting out perf. Hey, listen, imperfect action beats out waiting to take the perfect action any day. Remember that imperfect action. So any action that you're taking will be waiting to take the perfect action any day of the week. I will take that on every day of the week, man. Congratulations. Keep doing that, bro. That's how keep doing that. You're going to you're that's how you get deals. You, you just got to be consistent and make sure you don't deviate from that from that plan, whatever it is. Uh, Max, what are you guys seeing right now with your buyers? Obviously, we're seeing a slowdown, but what is your offer price range and this market shift? Honestly, man, you're going to be laughing, but I, I went super low now. Like if I can't get the deal at that price, I'm not even wasting my time because one thing I'm noticing with, um, with, um, with buyers, especially on the ones that need a lot more repairs. I just had a deal that, uh, that I, that I sent out to a couple buyers that, uh, had um what is it called the uh, septic issues the city wanted them to to uh pull it out and then connect directly to the to uh, the sewer sewer line and uh, man i thought it was a good deal overall but they just didn't want to they basically uh I hadn't, I hadn't locked it up what i like to do is i like to get an idea not at not all my buyers i don't text blast the address i have five buyers that i text that i fully trust that i have fully vetted that i have fully done business with and I asked them, what do you guys think about this deal? Where, where would you need to be at in order for make this deal work? And so based on the feedback I got from all five, um, I was probably I was way too far apart from originally what the seller wanted and where I wanted to be at. And the feedback was that they are staying away from the bigger projects unless they're getting them super deep, super deep. And so you have to listen to your buyers, man. The other thing too is that um, I'm focusing more too on on on, on seller on seller finance. I, I want to every deal that comes across my desk. I I want to see how I can make it work to where I can keep it. Now, obviously, I know no not a lot of people can do that. Um, but but again, um, listen to your buyers. Reach out to your buyers. I did a presentation uh, two weeks ago. Uh, I want to say or maybe what was it three weeks ago or something like that uh, at, at a at a meetup, and that's what I talked about, man. Like. The, the the game changer and the changer that basically that's that's happening, the change that's happening right now is that putting that human element back with your buyers, reaching out to them, right? Calling them. How's your business? What's shifted? What's changed? Where are you at buying now? So then now you can analyze every deal based on the information they're giving you. Because what I can tell you is that 80 to 90 percent of ARV buyer, they have disappeared, right? They're vanishing like 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 they're being picked up by UFOs. <laughs> But your guys that have been in this market for years, they're still there. They're just they're just they know how to shift. Right. These guys are the ones that are going to continue and you just have to shift with them. So hopefully that helps. Uh, Ken says, I do virtual driving for dollars in my market. Majority of the neighbors are updated. Last picks are March. 20th. There you go. I did. I couldn't speak on it because I've never done it. Um, I don't know how it works. I know for I know for I know that you go on Google, obviously, and you drive down the street on Google and you look at um, the pictures from uh, from Street View and obviously satellite to see if the pool is green and stuff like that. But I've never done it. Uh, Ken, can you share just your success on it? Um, if you have if you have your success on it, too. Andrew said, ask Uber drivers, Uber Eats, Amazon delivers, or any type of those services and let them know it can benefit. Yeah, there you go. That's what I said earlier. You know, um, go into the Uber driver. There's Facebook pages for Uber drivers, but you have to be careful because you'll get kicked out if you start to promote stuff. Uh, maybe um, on the low, DM them and stuff. And so, Liam, what's up, bro? How you doing? Good to see you, man. I love that you're on here all the time, man. I appreciate it. Crushing the lies, bro. Thank you. I appreciate it a lot. Uh, thanks a lot. Do you still do driving for dollars in your own business? I don't specifically, um, but we get people that want to partner up with us, and they do driving for dollars, and I'll still talk to them. But that was one of my uh, favorite uh, marketing channels was driving for dollars when I first started. And the reason why is two things, right? These properties – are not on anyone's list. Now you're gonna be like, "What do you mean, Max? Well, I, I buy a list and that address on there." Yes, but what I'm what I mean is the actual explanation of what's happening with this house. Think about it. If you had a list that you can buy, 
right? Besides the code enforcement and code violation, that's a little different because now they're now they're being fined or they're they're being um, uh, what is it called uh, threatened to be fined because either something's going on. But the driving for a dollar list, there's no list that actually is going to say, "Hey, guys, this list that you just bought from from whatever source, uh, it says uh, broken windows, boarded up, the roof is in shambles, the grass is six feet high, the pool is green, um, nobody's driven in this driveway, uh, the mailbox is is full." Tell me what list says that. There is no list that says that, and this is why I say this. It was my favorite because. It's not on anyone's list. They're not, there's no list that are saying that. And here's the second part why it's my favorite list is because it's one of my favorite lists anyways, is because you can get off and knock on the neighbor's door and say, hey, my name is Max. I was actually in the neighborhood and I buy properties and I noticed that the one next to you is um, is empty, vacant. Do you know anything about what's going on with that? I, I love to restore it and, or buy it and that way I can restore it so you can get some better, some good neighbors moving in there. That's the other thing that you want to make sure that you're doing when you're out there driving for dollars is I did that a lot, man. And um, I, neighbors will tell you everything. Believe me, they will tell you everything. So, uh, so Rusty said, I drive for dollars virtually all the time using batch driven. I make sure that the street view from Google is no older than the last two months. OK, there it is. Another tip. I love it. I love it. So uh, that's another tip. Uh, seller finance, 0%. Dude, you're the 0% king. I, I, I've seen your deals before. So they talk, I deliver. <laughs> and you know, I'm down with that movement, Thomas. I already told you that when, when we met. So, uh, that movement's amazing. So let's see. Uh, my latest deal I locked up, unfortunately too high. My comps bled into a higher price neighborhood. Now, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, if I don't know what your experience level is, Nathan, um, that tends to happen sometimes um, when when you're getting familiar and you're trying to get better at comping. But again, it's not intentional, right? There's a difference from locking up a deal maybe a little high because you maybe comped it wrong or locking up a deal a little high because you didn't do your, your due diligence on what it was going to take to, you know, re, uh, get it back, uh, to repair costs. Right. So those are the things that you, that is, there's no intentional malice behind that. Uh, you know, just, it's a, it's a lesson and you learn that. Right. Um, and so that way, uh, you can, uh, correct it the next time. So man, all these comments, uh, I'm going to pull up code violations from Texas, Arizona, Tennessee, Pennsylvania. Would you like me to partner up with me, Arizona, if I ever come access your lead? So, um, yeah, I'd love to, man. But what I will tell you is you actually, you can't buy it online. You can pull, actually, I'm sorry. If you have like a, uh, you can pull, I think it's Mesa. I don't know about Phoenix. Yeah. Let me know, man. I definitely love to partner up with you. I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, Bro, I'm I'm all open for that. You guys know that. So, yeah, if you can get that to happen, I know with Arizona, typically I've had to go I've had to go down there and pay the the fee and then they email it to me. But I don't know what what exactly how you're going to take the approach, but uh but basically um if you if you want to do that for sure. So, uh what are your main marketing channels, dude? Right now, um because obviously you know I'm um I'm rebuilding, restarting, right? Not from zero, but uh, right now I have co-calling, SMS. And then the next channel I'm going to add is going to be PPC for sure. I have to add PPC. Um, I think PPC, it, with the way the market is shifting, PPC is going to, um, I think it's going to see, right? So what I've noticed is from from the end of last year to, I would say, like March, co-calling like picked up for some reason. And then now with the way the market is shifting, PPC is going to be the way to go, man, honestly. And I haven't found, I haven't talked to anybody about doing my PPC, but that's the, that's the third channel I want to add, um, uh, as soon as I can, um, or as soon as I'm, I'm able to make sure that I, that I'm able to, um, intake the leads properly because also it's, it's not, it's not cheap. Um, so, but yeah, for sure. Um, PPC, uh, right now I'm doing texting and cold calling and give me good results, but I do want to do, I do want to, um, uh, PPC is going to be next. I'm not doing direct mail uh, right now. I just direct mail, man, left, left a real bad taste in my mouth this year. Um, so Aaron says, I am in Tucson. I'm in Tucson since it's a small college town. What's a good way to maximize profit like student housing? I was thinking, how does that work with code or red tape around it? Um, 
it just depends, man. Cause like every market's different when it comes to those things. Right. It's a, uh, you know, I would talk to, I don't, I don't, I don't, I mean, I've wholesaled in Tucson, but as far as like what you're trying to do, I would get with somebody that's doing it or somebody that understands the market. Um, I'm not sure exactly, man, the, 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 the logistical, the logistical, as, the logistic aspect of what you're trying to accomplish. So, um, I mean, just get with somebody, right. Get with somebody that basically, uh, that wants to, you know, help you and, and, and I mean, but that's definitely a, a way to maximize profit. I know there's, I've heard, and Sean Terry did a presentation three weeks ago about he's got student housing too. Actually, guys, if you guys have not heard this, you need to look this up. Jeff Bezos is buying a ton of student housings, a ton of real estate, and uh, and basically uh, uh, turning it into student housing, renting each room for like you know you know a thousand bucks or eight hundred bucks, something like that. Um, I just found that out about three weeks ago that Jeff Bezos is actually doing that. So um he's 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 uh what is it called um uh buying a ton of those and turning them into student housing so uh let's see i got flagged on our crm for cold texting support said we can now reach out via text unless they make first contact you ever run into that what's your uh what what crm are you using that'd be interesting because i don't i don't text out of my crm i use uh, uh there's programs that you can use like launch control um, I know, uh, Ricardo has a texting platform as well, too, that you can use, but I've never texted out of my, uh, CRM. Uh, if I get it dunked up, do you have buyers in PA? Yeah. Yeah. Hit me up, man. I, I hit me up for sure. Uh, Liam said, hit us up for that PPC, bro. Yes. I actually was talking to Ryan the other day about, uh, yesterday. I actually was talking to, uh, talking to him about you, Liam, in a positive way. <laughs> So definitely, um, uh, I have your number, so I'll hit you up for sure. Uh, Dalton said, I got you with the buyers. There you go. Connect, man. There it is. Connect, connect, connect. Uh, definitely make sure to have the systems upon the back end. Yeah, it's, uh, believe me, we made that mistake. And, um, and yeah, you could definitely lose money on PPC big, just like direct mail. Um, but I still love PPC more than direct mail for sure. Um, yeah, there is losing money on PPC. Uh, Aaron said house hack. Yep. That's it. Uh, hey, Max. Hey, Max. Average PPC cost between what prices for two states? I don't know because I haven't done PPC in, in, in a couple months. Uh, Liam, do you know do you know what that is? Do you know what's that? What's that running? OK, there he is. I think he just gave us the answer. Uh, Jay, he said, uh, if you're running unfiltered between two states, the minimum budget you'll want to run would be around four thousand a month, which is which is probably right. Yeah, that's that's about right. If you want to write, because we were running PPC here and then Oklahoma. And I think our span was about, yeah, anywhere from four to five grand for sure. Now that I remember. Um, just hopped on. Sorry for hopping late. Are you making calls today? That's true fire. Uh, I'm trying to get to, man. You guys have the questions are are great. And I want to get to all your questions because I think calls are awesome, too. Um, I want to make calls, but I think uh, you guys have some really, really uh, great questions when it comes to what, what this is. So he says, wow, Jeff Bezos is a beast. Yeah, man, it's crazy. I didn't know that. I found that out. Uh, Sean Terry, actually, when he, I was on a, one of his calls and he did a present. Guys, if there's anyone that I would probably listen to when it comes to anything that has to do with market shift or market corrections or crash or anything like that, He's definitely one of the guys. I'm not saying he's the only guy. Don't don't DM me and say he's the only guy. And Max, he's not the only guy. I'm not, I'm not saying that, but he is one of the guys that I would listen to just because his, I don't know if you ever heard, but his story is crazy. He was he went through the initial 2008 market. The guy made, I mean, multiple, multiple, multiple millions and uh, lost it all in the crash. And so then he got back up by wholesaling. And uh, and so what he learned from that was to look at like market trends and stuff. So but on, in that presentation, which he did the uh, he did the uh, what is it called? Um, the the he talked about how Jeff Bezos is buying uh, what do you call it um, student housing. So uh, do you do agent outreach? Uh, no, Ryan does, though. He does that. He does agent out out outreach. Uh, which Ryan were you talking with? Oh, uh, no. Uh, Overcash. Ryan Overcash. Yeah, that's my brother right there. Ryan Overcatch is the guy that I was talking to. Uh, Aaron says, Sean Terry is the truth. Yep, 100%. Uh, yep, you're welcome. Cool, guys. 
let's see. I think there was one question that I missed. Um, yeah, Ryan Overcash, uh, Liam. I don't know if you remember um, remember him or not. Uh, he's uh, he's 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 a good dude. He's a real deal. Like I said, he's like my brother. So, um, yeah, I think uh, I think the way the market is going when it comes to um, to what's happening, I think PPC is going to be huge. You know, people are going to be going online and they're going to, um, you know, start. Uh, what is it called? Uh, going online and, and, and finding uh, people to buy the the uh, the the uh, sorry, going after people to buy their properties that are not selling on the MLS. They're going to look for another solution. They're going to look for another answer. And I think, you know, what's what what does everybody have on their phone? Right. Which is um, which is, you know, Internet. Right. And they're going to go on there. So because uh, what's happening, you know, one thing I noticed because I haven't I hadn't done texting in a while. Um, even on cold calling, this is going to become a big problem, dude. I don't get on my phone on my phone. I don't. It, I don't get any calls that are not in my contact list. Think about that. So one thing that I started thinking, I just started doing that this year. And one thing that it brought me back to was how, why the, why the connection rate is so low. And, and basically I remembered and it hit me. Well, I don't get any calls that are not on my contact list. They all go to voicemail or they all, they, they, or they don't ring at all. So I was thinking if I'm doing that, and let's let's assume that, you know, a percentage of 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 the population is doing that now because iPhone has that option. Well, that's going to that's going to hit uh, cold calling as well, too. Now, I don't know. man. I, I'm just preparing because that's that's kind of I put two and two together and I started thinking like that possibly could be why some cold callers don't get their contact ratio is very low and their conversations and their lead flow, because that's the phone's. It's not just the providers. It's also the phones now, right? The phones themselves. You turn on a switch and, and you don't, I, nothing rings to my phone unless you're in my contacts. And so if you're not in my contacts, you don't get through. And so again, that's, that's going to probably um, disrupt a little bit on the cold calling side. Um, how much? I don't know. I mean, how much? I don't know. Um, maybe I'm overthinking this, but honestly, I, I don't think I'm not. Like I said, if you get a percentage of the country or percentage of the population who do the same thing that I'm that I did on my phone, then it's going to it's going to probably put a little bit of a hit on um, on cold calling. And obviously we know like and obviously we know text text is definitely not uh, it, it's it's on life support, probably dead by now. But um, Liam said PPC is going to be nuts already seeing a shift, especially with what Paul was talking about with cold text getting more and more restricted. Yeah. I mean, you know, texting has definitely been on that, um, on that wave of, of, uh, dying right on life support for a while, but definitely I think, uh, uh, PPC is, is, is going to be the next shift. Uh, Max, do you have tips on building report with sellers? Uh, yeah. So, so, so every time that you talk to a seller, basically one one of the things that that the way that that I like to build rapport, it should never be gimmicky, right? It should never be like, hey, those golf clubs that are in the corner, do uh, you play golf? Like that's gimmicky, right? Trying to see if um, if 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 you can get them, because because what happens in in most cases, the the most people try to build rapport in a way that to get the prospect to like to like them, right? To like you. And, and my, my objection is not to get the prospect to like me. My objection is to get the prospect to trust me and to do business with me. So there's a couple of, there's obviously a lot of things that you can do, but, but for, for, and for you to build, to be able to build report and do it in a fast way is, uh, is actually marrying and labeling. It works a lot, works well. And also, um, rephrasing, and reinstating, rephrasing exactly the way, the, rephrasing what they just, what they, what you heard them say, using the exact same words, and then reinstating by using different words. So that way they feel like you're, you're actually listening to them. And then when you mirror them and, and when you mirror them, they obviously are going to start to get comfortable with you. And so there's a rule. You should be, li you should be listening 70% of the time on the phone and you should be talking 30 percent of, uh, of the time and words at the end. don't. It's a very small seven percent on words. 
but the one who's doing most of the talking is doing the buying. So make sure that uh, uh, there's programs um, like CallRail. If you if you use CallRail, there are actually there's call systems that are actually uh, give you percentage of how much you talk and how much the prospect talk. So if you can have the prospect talking 70 percent or more, you shouldn't whether whether it's 60, 40, you know, uh, 55, it should be the prospect doing most of the talking. Right. It should not be you. And again, how does that help you is by rephrasing, restating. And you rephrase by like, say, if I was talking to you and you were telling me like, hey, this is what's going on. Um, you know, I need to sell because of this. OK, so so it sounds like what's going on is this and you need to sell because this by this time because of that. Now, if I'm restating some with different words, now I'm going to say, OK, so what I heard was that you said this. Did you mean to say maybe like maybe this is not what needed to be done? Now, now you're you're reinstating back the phrase just using different words. And again, one thing that uh, that the, the, the one thing that I can tell you is building report in person and building report on the phone is way two different things, way two different things. And and the reason why is because in person, it's 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 a lot more body language than actual words. On the phone, it's your tonality. That's the third. That's the third factor. Is you got to master your tonality when, when when it comes to talking to sellers. And how do you do that? You do that by mirroring. If I'm talking to somebody that's really low, that talks really soft, I'm going to talk really soft. If I'm talking to someone who talks really fast. I'm going to talk really fast. If I'm talking to someone who wants to yell, wants to do big gestures, I'm going to do big gestures. I'm going to mirror them. I just showed you right now three different three different things that you could that you could do. Right. And that's how you build rapport with someone, because guess what? If you can get them to get comfortable with you, you're going to be able to get them to trust you to do business with you. Um, but um, hopefully those things can help you, uh, you know, uh, to start the report building. And you can also, too, just ask them, hey, you know, I know there's everybody has different styles. Everybody has different ways. For me, I like to I like to build quite a bit of report and I like to get into, uh, you know, letting them know how these calls go. Um, if right off the back, they don't even want to talk to you. And then it's just like, what's your number? Then I, I move on. Like, I'm not even going to spend time. Right. I move on right away because I know that conversation is just going to be about, um, about the number. So, um, hopefully that helps Jose. Um, why do you say SMS is almost dead? Because what, uh, because of what, uh, what do you call it? Uh, who, who made the comment earlier? Um, I think it was, no, not Rudy. Um, I remember who made the comment earlier about the about text message. It's just the 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 um the carriers have gotten strict. Like if you do text message, like say in a program like Batch or Launch Control, man, there's a lot of loopholes that you have to go through. You have to create um you have to create uh what is it called the uh, um templates, and then you got to create these 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 spin tokens, and then you got to basically if you want to text still. If you want to text, uh, uh, get sorry. If you want to get like good results in texting, mass texting is dead. I can tell you that right now. Mass texting, where you can just click a button and schedule it, and you send out thirty thousand, fifteen thousand, ten thousand text messages. That's yeah, that that that's dead already. Um, you don't, you're not gonna get. And the carriers, they actually, your text won't even make it to the prospect because the carriers have uh, have uh, a list of words that are considered. Uh, spam and they're blocked way before you get in way before they even make it to the uh, to the what do you call it um uh prospects so jared says mirroring and labeling is great 100 percent it is that's what you want to do to build report and then he says just listen and understand them yeah so yeah that's that's key right there right listening it's it's if you can again prospects should be talking 70 percent of the time and the and and you should be listening 70 percent of the time and then you should talk uh basically 30 percent of the, of the time so liam says gotta head out boss talk later keep crushing the lives thank you bro appreciate it uh let's we'll be connecting soon thank you liam have a good day bro um yeah so so says thanks uh gotta jump back to the day job duties let's go perfect yeah man um let me know if you need anything guys I know we didn't get to the calls, but hopefully this live brought a lot of value based on the questions that you guys that you guys brought. Um, I'm I'm going to uh, basically uh, what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to uh, somebody actually a couple of people have requested this, and I'm going to do this for you guys because I'm nice. Um, I'm going to go back 
through uh, through all my YouTube videos. And what I'm going to do is if you go in YouTube, there's a playlist and I'm going to extract all the calls, the explanation of the calls. So that way, will that will that help you guys? What do you guys think about that? If I was to do that, if I was to create the playlist of only the calls with the explanations, would that help you guys? Who wants to see that? Let me know in the comment section if that's something you want to see where you can come to my YouTube channel. And if you don't want to go through the whole live, like you like, like say this one or a live where we're answering questions, but you just want to come to uh, listen to the calls. Who wants who wants who put in the comment section if that would be valuable to you. And then what I'll do is I'll get a v, my VA to start doing that if you think that would absolutely work. So that way you guys can just hop on. And then what I'll do is I'll create a like I said, a playlist of, hey, this is the call with uh, Bob. This is the call with James. This is the call. And then um, what I'll do is I'll break down the whole call and then the section of that. So um, because um, I, I, I've gotten a couple of requests, I just haven't had time to actually get that set up. But I know I've had a couple of people actually uh, uh, request that. Um, so I want to do that. So that way it's available for you. Uh, so keep an eye out on Instagram and basically uh, um, and that way I can uh, do that for you. So it looks like uh, uh, Andrew said, absolutely. Nathan, thumbs up. I appreciate it. Mark says, thumbs up. Appreciate it. Uh, Sergio said 100 percent. That would that would be that he would love that uh, more live calls would be great because there's always new tips and every call since they're all different. Yeah, no, 100 percent. I still want to do that for sure. Um, it's uh, it's. Um, it's always been the reason why I created the show. But a lot of times what happens, there's you guys have a lot of questions. I also want to help you with the questions. But I, I know and understand that live calls do help you who help even more. Uh, so, uh, Jared, that's something that I strive to do a lot more of. Uh, Nathan said good stuff. I appreciate it. So, guys, I appreciate every single one of you for being on. Um, if there's anything you need, DM me. Remember, for those of you that want access to the Facebook group, don't forget, go back to IG, even though you messaged me before. Uh, make sure that you're messaging me so you can uh, basically uh, let you, so I can let you in. And then what I want to do is uh, have you guys in the group. There's a ton of content in the group that's not on YouTube. Uh, so make sure that you go over there. And if you got value out of this call today, hit me up, man. Uh, tag me on your stories. Let people know you were on the live. Uh, you know, screenshot it. Tag me at Real Max Jimenez right down there. And then that way I can reshare it, help more people because that's we're about. Uh, that's what we're all about. I appreciate everyone, every single one of you for jumping on, and uh, I'll see you on the next one, okay? Talk to you guys He's later. He's one of the greatest guys I've ever met, huge inspiration. You know, the advice he gave me made me like $50,000 in one hour. A super fucking human, he just doesn't go up, he doesn't quit. He's one of the most well-known salespeople out there, sales trainers in the fucking country. Very impressive guy, give it up for my guy, Matt Encarador. He's Matt, baby! Woo!